Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be doing some work in order to derive our specific heats. And there are going to be two of them that we're looking at, the specific heat at constant pressure and the specific heat at constant volume. Now, the starting point of this video is a little bit weird, and we're going to get a little bit mathy as we move through this. But the end result is going to be the basis of a lot of the work that we do in the future. So to start off, it is possible for us to say that our internal energy is a function of our temperature and our specific volume. That is legal for us. And the reason for this is something called the state principle, which says that a state can be fully defined by any two independent variables. Now, likewise, we can also say that our enthalpy is a function of temperature and pressure for the exact same reason. Now, these aren't the only two choices that we could possibly make. We could say that our internal energy is a function of temperature and pressure or of pressure and specific volume, or we could choose other things. But these choices just happen to lead us to useful results. So that's why we're choosing them. Now, what we're going to do is take something called the total derivative. This is kind of a Cal 3 concept. Basically, because we have a function of multiple variables, whenever we take a derivative, we need to consider the impact of both of those variables. So we take a derivative of u, we think of a small change in u, and we say that that is going to be caused by a small change in temperature and a small change in volume. Now, the way that temperature impacts our specific internal energy is through a partial derivative, du dt. And the exact same thing is true of specific volume. It's going to be through the partial derivative du dv that we get a change in u. Now, this is very much math language. Uh, in thermodynamics, we have slightly different nomenclature that we like to use. So we're going to rewrite this, and it's more of a transliteration than anything else. These things mean the same thing. We're just going to write them a little bit differently. We're going to write this as the derivative of u with respect to temperature while we hold volume constant. So this is still a derivative, but now we're specifying that volume is held constant. So that means the same thing as what we have up here, except up here we need to have that additional context of knowing that u is a function specifically of temperature and specific volume. Whereas down here, this v is telling us that we're keeping the volume constant whenever we're taking this derivative. Now this is still going to be multiplied by a differential change in temperature. Whenever we take this other derivative, right, we're going to do the same thing, where we take the derivative of u with respect to specific volume, and now we're holding temperature constant, and that's going to be multiplied by dv. So for the second derivative, we're saying that temperature is held constant. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing for h. So just like with u, we're going to take, <clears throat> just like with u, we're going to take the total derivative, and we're going to get that dh is equal to a partial of h with respect to t times dt plus the partial of h with respect to p times dp. And then we're going to reorganize that in the exact same way that we did with du. So now this is going to be a dh dt with pressure held constant this time since h was a function of t and p and dh dp with temperature held constant. Okay, now before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about what we're looking for in a specific heat. We kind of started off with the state principle and worked from there, but we haven't really defined where we're trying to go to. So a specific heat helps define the amount of heat required in order to cause a change in temperature. 
In chemistry, we often use the equation that Q is equal to MC delta T. We don't want to be dealing with this M, and so we're going to divide that out. And so capital Q divided by M is going to become a lowercase Q. Right? This is a kilojoule per kilogram now. And then we're going to divide that by delta T, and that's going to be our specific heat. Right? This is some amount of heat that we've added divided by the change in temperature that that created. And so that's going to be this specific heat. Now, with the language that we're using of differential changes, we're actually going to prefer to talk about some differential amount of heat that we're adding per some differential temperature change. So this is going to be our definition of our specific heat. So the trick is that it depends on how we add this heat. What are we holding constant in order to uh, get this definition? And it turns out that there are two useful things to hold constant. And so we're going to find the specific heat where volume is held constant and the specific heat where pressure is held constant. So with that being said, let's go back to the first law of thermodynamics and try to isolate that Q. So we know that delta U is equal to Q minus W, and we can divide through by mass and then also take differential quantities in order to say that this is a DU is equal to some differential Q minus some differential work. Now, there is a reason for this weird delta symbol that we're using. And we're using it because Q and W are not properties. For what we're doing today, these don't matter that much, but they do matter when you dig deeper. With this equation in hand, we can solve for that DQ. And that's going to be equal to DU plus PDV, because we know that this differential work element here is actually pressure multiplied by a differential specific volume. Now, with this in hand, we can come back to our U column and start working through a little bit more. So DQ, in this case, is going to be equal to everything that we had for DU. And then we need to add this PDV term. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than what we'd like, because remember, what we want is to arrive at something that looks like this delta Q divided by DT. But we can remember that we're looking at a situation with constant volume here, right? We have a constant volume here, and then we have a DV in both of these terms. So this is only appropriate whenever we're thinking about constant volume. And then if we chose constant volume, both of these terms would fall away because the dv component would go to zero. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set both of these to zero, and our justification for that is that we are going to have a constant volume process. And so where we end up from this is that this delta q divided by dt is equal to du dt at constant volume. And this is exactly our constant volume specific heat. So over here, we're going to try and do something similar, but we're going to try to do it with constant pressure. Now, in order for that to work, we're going to need to revisit what we're doing with this equation here. And the key thing that we're going to use is the fact that u is equal to H minus PV. And so with that, we can say that DU is equal to DH minus PDV minus VDP. The reason we get two terms here is because we're taking the product rule of D of PV, right? So these two things together come from a negative DPV because of that product rule. Okay, but now we can plug this du back into the equation up here, and we get that delta Q is equal to dH minus PDV minus VDP, and then we add in the PDV that we had before, 
And then of course, this negative PDB and the positive PDB cancel out. And so we're left with DQ is equal to DH minus VDP. And so now we get to take this equation and plug in our DH term. So our DQ is going to be equal to DH DT at constant pressure, right? Because we're taking everything from DH multiplied by DT plus DH DP at constant temperature multiplied by DP. And then we're subtracting off this VDP term because that's the last piece of the puzzle. And just like before, we're able to get rid of both of these extra terms. And this time it's because we're looking at a constant pressure process. And so then we can again divide by DT and we end up with DQ over DT is equal to DH DT at a constant pressure. And so this is our constant pressure specific heat. So the core idea of specific heat comes from this idea of some change in temperature requiring some amount of heat in order to warm it up. But the amount of added heat to get a specific temperature change is different depending on if we are looking at a constant volume process or a constant pressure process. So those are going to be two different specific heats. And that's the key thing that we are getting out of this video is that there are two different specific heats depending on those situations. In any case, I hope this was helpful and I will catch you again next time.